the transient behavior uh, of this device after showing us that from the external point of view there is not very large difference on drain voltage and drain current with respect to other devices uh, showed us that uh, the real difference is on the gate behavior. It must also be said that since these devices do not have any stored charge, they are resistive devices, they are quite fast during the switching. The power dissipation for the switching is important, but not so significant like for other devices, bipolar devices. This means that a significant portion of the power dissipation is also the power needed to charge and discharge the input capacitances. You studied a lot the digital electronics concept, and for digital electronics you perfectly know that charging and discharging the input capacitance of a CMOS inverter is a significant power loss. This is more or less the same. In some application, the charging and discharging the input capacitance on the MOSFET is the most important aspect. This is why the input capacitance, the reverse capacitance, the output capacitance is the one seen from the devices are reported on data sheets. But on the data sheets, you also find another value that is at least as important. That is the gate charge. Actually, the gate to drain capacitances, CISS, COSS, are very nonlinear, and it is difficult to keep track from those curves of the behavior of the device. What is really significant from a, a practical point of view is that when you switch the device on, you will see a gate voltage that has more or less this uh, shape. And in the end, the integral of the current, uh, of the voltage assuming a constant current flow, is the charge that you need to switch the device on and off. This is the typical test circuit for the gate charge. There is a switch here, and then there is a constant current flowing to switch the device off with the given current here. And then you measure this um, behavior of the gate voltage that increases linearly up to the Miller capacitance, then it stays constant up to the discharge of the gate during capacitance, then keeps increasing. In this uh, way, while this happens, the drain voltage and drain current more or less behave like this. You can integrate this voltage to obtain the current, the charge, and this charge is this is the gate to source charge. This uh, this region here. This is the gate to drain capacitance, and this is the the, the remaining portion of the gate charge. There is also the gate threshold voltage charge that is just the charge needed to reach the threshold. Usually on the data sheets you find the gate charge, that is the, gate, the charge needed to switch the device on and off in typical conditions. Actually this is the energy that you need to use the charge that you need to transfer. If you have a reduced gate resistance, this charge will be transferred faster or slower, but in the end, this is the charge that you need. Uh, the gate charge plot does actually depends on the test conditions, and this is why on data sheets it is important to see which are the test conditions for the device. For example, for a given current, this region is a constant derivative, but the plateau, the plateau depends on the current. 
if the current is larger, like here, you will need the larger VGS star voltage. Hence, this, uh, this region will stop later. Then, this is the original, the black one is the original waveform. If we reduce the drain current for the test condition, the plot will be the light blue curve with reduced IDS label that will stop before. In same way, moving from the black solid line curve that is the typical test condition, if we reduce the VDS, we are reducing the charge. The, during turn off, you need to discharge the gate of drain capacitance. But if the VDS is smaller, the capacitance is get at smaller voltage and will need less charge to be discharged. Hence, this gate to drain, this plateau is shorter. The gate to drain capacitance behavior will depend on the test conditions. The gate charge is indicated as QG, is usually given in nanocoulomb. Since it is so important to measure the gate charge, and since the gate charge corresponds to power dissipation, we want to have devices with very small gate charge. It will be, they will be faster to switch on and off. They will require less energy to switch on and off. But if you think carefully, it is very simple to reduce the gate charge. The MOSFET is actually made with a, a number of cells in parallel, with a number of capacitances in parallel. The simple way to reduce the gate charge is reducing the silicon area, make a smaller device. Instantaneously, if you halve the silicon area, you are halving the gate charge. But which is a drawback? If you reduce the silicon area, the on state resistance increases because the epilayer resistance is uh, doubled, the channel resistance is doubled, everything in terms of resistance is doubling. Hence, there is a trade off between gate charge and on state resistance. Actually, it looks like uh, that the product between gate charge and on state resistance is a constant for a given technology. Hence, the figure of merit. A typical figure of merit, merit for uh, MOSFETs is the product between the gate charge and the RDS, RDS in the on state, the on state resistance. This parameter, as previously said, is a figure of merit and is not a function of the silicon area. The figure of merit are uh, quite important for comparing devices. It is true that when you come to market devices, the devices that you have, you have available on the market, you have a limited choice and maybe you will choose in terms of performance and cost. But if you need to compare a few technologies to see which one is better and which one will provide you better performances in the future, maybe you are working in a manufacturing company for power devices, then you need this figure of merits. Uh, this one is a, is a common one for power of MOSFET, but there are others that have been proposed uh, there is, for example, a Baliga. I, Baliga is the professor that wrote the Power Semiconductor Devices book, famous one. And uh, he proposed also this high frequency figure of merit, merit that assumes that the dominant switching loss is associated with the charging and discharging of the input capacitances. And this allows to compare different devices. 
And there is also a new high frequency figure of merit that, that assumes that the dominant losses for the circuit are given and are due to the output capacitance. These are methods that focus on power MOSFET uh, on the appli various applications. These are the papers that propose the, these figures of merit. They are not very, very, very modern. This one is 1989, this one is 1995. Uh, this is true, but this shows you also another thing. The, this field is, is not exactly new, it's, it's, it's not born yesterday. Power devices are common till uh, 1960. But still, there are important innovations in the last in the last years. Every time and time, there is a new idea, new concept, new devices. And uh, the the message here: these papers are not actually new. They, they are they are they have not been published yesterday, but still, they are not very old. This is 20 years ago for the fi figure of merits.